Welcome to Japan Issues. Professor Emeritus of Yale University. Why the criticism that Abenomics has increased inequality is completely incorrect. No other politician is as studious as former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. We would like to share the analysis and commentary by Dr. Koichi Hamada, Professor Emeritus, Yale University. Which originally appeared in the President Magazine, October 14, 2022 issue. The real reason for Japan's long term economic stagnation is the strong yen. Since the death of former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe, the media has been actively examining and discussing the merits and demerits of the Shinzo Abe administration. It is unfortunate, however, that some have taken the stance of dismissing everything negatively due to the issue of his relationship with the former Unification Church. Can we not calmly evaluate his contribution to the lives of the people as an achievement? In the economic field, Abenomics was a major achievement. The rise in stock prices was one achievement. But job creation was the most significant accomplishment of Abenomics. In the seven years between the inauguration of the second Shinzo Abe administration in December 2012 and just before the outbreak of the new coronavirus, the number of people in the workforce increased by as many as 5 million. To those who may not be familiar with this figure, let me say this. Abenomics enabled about the same number of people to find new jobs as the population of Fukuoka Prefecture, about 5.1 million. The job-to-applicants ratio for regular employees improved from 0.52 to 1.18, and both regular and non-regular employees were nearly at full employment. Companies that had been reluctant to invest in Japan began to respond to the labor shortage. The Bank of Japan's misguided monetary policy and the apathy of politicians led to the economic downturn. I heard that many young people who appeared to be in their 20s or 30s lined up to offer flowers to former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. Although they have little political appeal, they may have quietly joined hands in recognition of the Shinzo Abe administration's success in dramatically improving the job offer rate at universities, which had been worse than during the so-called Ice Age of employment, 1993 to 2005. Why did the Japanese economy suffer such a prolonged downturn in the first place? I would like to look back at why Abenomics was able to put an end to it, taking into account the historical background. In conclusion, I believe that the Bank of Japan's monetary policy mistakes and the apathy of politicians led to the economic slump. And former Prime Minister Abe boldly tackled these structural problems. That is what made him different from previous leaders. From the time of the post war fixed exchange rate system, 360 yen to the dollar, until 1985, the yen tended to depreciate strongly. And Japanese industry, especially export industry, was enriched. However, the Plaza Accord, September 1985, which was held to reduce the U.S. trade deficit, forced Japan to change its policy toward a stronger yen. In response, Japan introduced a policy of low interest rates, which caused stocks and land prices to soar, leading to the bursting of the bubble economy in 1992. The Bank of Japan, having learned the lesson from its failure to loosen monetary policy too much, had since stubbornly continued to operate in a tightening trend. In addition, many successive Bank of Japan governors were oriented toward the appreciation of the yen. At a meeting of the Council on Economic and Fiscal Policy, I advised the then Bank of Japan governor, 1998-2003, to, to ease monetary policy and weaken the yen in order to stimulate economic recovery. However, this did not go over well with the Bank of Japan governor who was a yen appreciator, in other words, he wanted the yen to be a currency respected by the rest of the world. As for politicians, most of them, even those who are considered quite veteran members of the Diet and those who are considered to be in a position of competence, said. 
There is no doubt that we should leave fiscal and monetary matters to the Ministry of Finance and the Bank of Japan. From 2001 to 2006, the Bank of Japan introduced zero interest rates, which the then governor described as extraordinary, in response to the too long economic slump. And the Japanese economy began to show signs of revival. However, in September 2008, the Lehman shock occurred. A large amount of mortgage backed securities embedded in financial products turned to paper trash overnight like Cinderella's carriage turning back into a pumpkin, plunging the country into a financial crisis. At this time, central banks in Europe and the U.S. took bold measures to end the turmoil by issuing large amounts of currency and purchasing mortgage-backed securities. However, since mortgage-backed securities were not widely used in Japan, they were reluctant to issue quantitative easing, leading to the appreciation of the yen. When a country's currency is at zero interest rates, it is the monetary base that determines the exchange rate. If the supply of the currency is small relative to the supply of other currencies, it is only natural that the yen will appreciate. The Ministry of Finance, MOF, also believed that the Lehman shock was nothing more than a bee sting for the Japanese economy. Due in part to this poor response, the LDP lost power in September 2009. However, former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe studied economic policy thoroughly, especially monetary policy. In order to revive the party, he held study sessions with experts, including former Ministry of Finance bureaucrats and a professor emeritus at Gakushuin University at the time who later became deputy governor of the Bank of Japan. Shinzo Abe also recognized that monetary policy is indispensable for the recovery of employment and overcoming deflation, and that the assumption that the political administration should stay out of monetary policy is wrong, and he listened to my recommendations at the advisory council. I had many opportunities to lecture politicians before that time but no one was more eager to learn about economics and finance than former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. That is how he conceived of Abenomics during the three years when the Liberal Democratic Party was in the opposition, and he listened attentively to Krugman and Stiglitz, both Nobel Prize winners in economics. And at the end of 2012, upon the LDP's return to power, this groundbreaking economic policy was launched. Furthermore, in March 2013, Mr. Haruhiko Kuroda, who shared the view that bold monetary policy is necessary to break out of deflation and achieve the 2% price stability target, was appointed governor of the Bank of Japan. Finally correcting the strong yen trend. Some criticized the assessment that Abenomics has created a large number of jobs, saying that most of the increase has been in non-regular employment which has led to a decline in real wages and widened the gap, but this is not true at all. First of all, the increase of approximately 5 million new workers, mentioned above includes 2 million people in full-time employment, compared to a decrease of 500,000 during the former Democratic Party of Japan. Administration also, real wages are calculated by dividing the actual take-home pay by the rate of price inflation. So even if take-home pay declines during deflation, real wages will increase. Furthermore, if the economy recovers and housewives who have not been working start working part-time, retirees who have not been able to find new employment after retirement are hired. And many new graduates are able to find work, expanding the base of workers, it is natural that average wages will fall. Former Prime Minister Shinzo Abe himself said, as a hypothetical example, in a household where only the husband worked and earned 600,000 yen, if the wife started working part-time and earned 100,000 yen, the household income would increase to 700,000 yen, 600,000 yen for the husband plus 100,000 yen for the wife. However, the average wage per employed person would drop to 350,000 yen, 700,000 yen divided by two, he refuted. 
without understanding the background of these figures, or by intentionally taking advantage of them, is it really fair to criticize the Shinzo Abe administration for making life more difficult and widening inequality? Is it really fair to criticize the Shinzo Abe administration for making life more difficult and widening inequality? The Shinzo Abe administration and Abenomics have their faults. However, in order to move the Japanese economy forward and adopt better policies, the Shinzo Abe administration's policies should be evaluated in a calm and objective manner. That's all. From the analysis and commentary by Dr. Koichi Hamada, Professor Emeritus, Yale University.